let's get started with, uh, okay, this is chapter three, Capitulum Tertium, uh, where we actually uh, are introduced to uh, our first verbs, other than uh, the verb to be, you know, est and sunt, is and are. So let's uh, start with our uh, beginning prayer here. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. So, um, I wanted, I, I, we talked about uh, uh, we talked about pronunciation uh, last time, and um, it, I thought I'd put these, um, I'd, I'd assemble these charts here uh, a little better and uh, clean them up. Uh, let's see, pronunci, that should be an A, pronunciatio. There we go. Pronunciation, there we go. Let's keep that straight. Anyway, um, so what you do is you take a word, let's say Anchila, you skip the last syllable, so that's la. There's, there's never any stress on the last syllable. Uh, in fact, I don't know how you'd stress a one-syllable word. Maybe there is a way. But then you look at the second to last, chill, and you ask, is that vowel long? The answer is no. Then you put the third syllable from the end, so ah. So it is Angela. Servus. Well, we only have two work, two vowels, so you got to put the accent on the uh, on the ser. <laughs> but what happens when we go from Angela to Ancelarum? We now have a long vowel in the second place. So the stress goes on that second vowel. Uh, well, oh, that's, no, okay. Anchila would only be if the I is long, okay? And I will consult my, yeah. And in fact, well, let's see here. Um, which, uh, let's see, which, um, let's see, it was in the second, tell you what, let's close that, let's go over here, and it was in the second chapter, and uh, which one was it? I think it was in this one, wasn't it? Let's see, oh boy, that's kind of tiny. Let's see where that was here. Uh, da, da, da. You don't miss your service. See, Anchilla, there is no, no, law, no uh, Macron over the eye. And we could listen to this. Let's go ahead and do that here. Whoop, add Adam in here. Let me, um, let me resize this so we can, uh, let's see here. I want to go, okay, we'll close that. Let us start that. Esne medus filius julii. Medus filius julii non est. Medus est servus julii. Julius dominus medi est. Julius dominus Servi est. Davos quoque servus est. Medus est Davos duo servi sunt. Julius est Dominus medi et Davi. 
Julius Dominus Servorum est, et pater liberorum. Esne Delia filia Emiliae? Delia non est filia Emiliae. Delia Ancilla Emiliae est. Yeah. Emilia Domina Delia est. Emilia Domina Ancilla est. Sira quoque Ancilla est. Delia et Sira okay. due Ancilla sunt. Emilia Domina. So anyway, I think it's pretty clear. Let's see, we'll go back to uh, what we're doing there. There we go. So I'm oh, I Yeah. Oh, so it occurred to me while we were listening to that, and while you say it, it's like it's not written as a long vowel, but that syllable is still getting stressed. Like everyone, like they they are saying it on chilla, not on chilla still. Anyway, so even though it's not a long one, it's still getting stressed. Uh, yeah, I think you're right now that you mention it, because it would be on chilla. Mm, interesting. When I was listening, he started out doing it the way that you're saying we should do it, but then toward the end, he started doing it as uh, uh, I think it was that Laura was just saying. So I noticed a shift, like he's being really careful at the beginning of it, and then kind of fell into the uh, Don Chilla part later. So what I'm wondering though is like, is it is that we're just a special exception, or is the rule like different? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, there, there's that's a that the the three syllable rule is fairly. I mean that that's the standard. Okay. Um. But you're right. It was it it should be Anchila, not Anchila. Um. Tell you what, I'll go back and listen to that some more. Um. That particular recording is kind of tinny. So um. And I have heard them places where they did screw up. So, um, but now I'll, let, me, let me go back and think about that. Uh, but anyway, the important thing is, is when you go to the third one, it is angelarum. So it does switch. So whether it is angela or angela, when that plural, the A-R-U-M ending, um, genitivus pluralis, is added, then it becomes ancillarum. So, so you've got to be careful that as you add and subtract endings, the stress on the vowel may change because the, the vowels will shift. Uh, servus. Okay, everybody agrees the accents on the SE, the servus, the serv, but it is servorum. It shifts to this vowel since it is long. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll uh, I'll I'll make a note to listen to that, but it should be um I'm looking at my dictionary and they do not have it stressed. So let's see here. I'm just Yeah, I don't know. I think it should be Angela, but I'll look into it. Uh, let's see, what else was I going to say? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, spelling. <laughs> uh, that's the only way I can figure out how to space spelling in Latin. Um, <laughs> the ordering of the, of the um, syllables of the letters. Kind of a terrible way of it. Anyway, one way to help out with your macrons is to pronounce what you have written exactly as you type. This is in the exercises. I've seen a number of places where it's pretty clear the person just did not put it. Um, so known is correct, all right? But non sounds funny. So if you go back and you look at your answer, there's there's a number of places people left off the long, the macro on the O. Hmm. Some of that may have been just, well, I, I don't think it was intentional because other places they put it back in. So we'll consider that a typo for lack of a better term. 
So the best thing is when you when you put in your exercise before you submit it, read some of the answers back to you and pronounce it the way you typed it. So if I say, um, um, Britannia non insula parva, that says okay. But if I say Britannia non insula parva, that sounds rather weird, okay? Phileus is correct, but Phileus sounds weird. Oops. Okay. So that will keep cue you in that you need a long I in there. Likewise, Julius, but who's Julius? <laughs> Anyway, so this uh, this may help you out a little bit when you um, do your um, uh, um, you know when you do some of the exercises. Now, the other thing we saw is our first verbs in this chapter: cantat, pulsat, plorat, read, uh, sorry, ridet, videt, vocat, and venit. And by the way, that is a short E. I'm going to stick a short E in there. Uh, and I'm going to emphasize that because then it is he comes, vain it is he came. And so um, you can kind of see that in, in it's kind of like English, you know, come is a short O, I guess. I'm not sure what the sound is, certainly not a long O. It'd be comb. <laughs> which is what you're using your hair. Um, so that, that vowel shift between venet and venet is sort of like common came in English. Uh, anyway, the important thing is, but getting is they all end in T, 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 T. And what you're gonna see, and the, the grammar even mentions is, uh, um, is a uh, that uh, all third person singular verbs in the indicative, and, and I'm not going to define what indicative is if, for the moment. I, I don't want to get too down in the weeds of the of the um, Thank of you. grammar, but they all end in t. Okay, now we already have some verbs that we we already know about est which is third person singular is and sunt which is third person plural so just as this ends in t cantat posat plorat ridet videt and vocat all end in t if i were to make them plural instead of he she it sings i would make it cantat pulsant, plorant, redent. So just like the T in est and the NT in sunt, those endings carry across the various verbs. We haven't had the plural forms of these yet. I think all they had in the, uh, lesson two was uh, singular, but we'll get to the plurals. And I thought I'd mention the fact that if you pick, if you could remember the est and the sunt, that is a, a good um, uh, um, paradigm to work from. Let's see what else. Uh, yeah, and what they're leading up to is there are four classes of verbs. Now, we, we said that there were multiple classes of nouns. We called them declensions. Well, the verb, the, the analogous term for verbs is conjugations, okay? And there are four of them. Um, they're pretty straightforward. And the good news is, is that all four have the same T or NT ending for verbs in what's known as the indicative. Well, what is the indicative? All right, I suppose I should uh, mention that. Uh, the indicative, oh boy, what's a good definition for it? The indicative is an X, uh, is a, a statement of uh, fact, okay? 
later on, we're going to see something called the subjunctive. Okay. Um, English really doesn't have a subjunctive. That, that's why. I, so I don't. I, so I don't want to get too tied up with this at the moment. But for the moment, <clears throat> the verbs we're going to get they end in t or nt for the third person. Uh, oops, and I should say third person here. I want to emphasize that. Other persons, they change, okay? So we're going to see that this is true no matter what the tense is. <clears throat> right now, all we have is the present tense. But this is true of the imperfect, the um, future, the pluperfect, the perfect, and the future perfect, okay? So um, you're going to find that there are a whopping number of endings for verbs, okay? Uh, but the good news is, is this T and NT are across the board. In fact, I'll, uh, oh, I don't have a, that's right, I didn't do a table of that. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about it at the moment. But uh, first conjugation, those are called ARE verbs. And again, this is getting a little bit ahead. Cantat, cantant, pulsat, pulsant, torat, torant. He, she, it sings, they sing, he, she, it hits, they hit, he, she, it cries, they cry. Um, the second conjugations have that little E in there. And then the third conjugation, I didn't see any of those in the, in the, in the uh, story, but we'll get those. And then there's the IRE, the vein it. Now, vein it. The I is a little bit different. There's an I-U-N-T, because if we tried to pronounce that, it would be Bennett. Let's see, let me put up there. But Vaniunt sounds so much nicer. So, um, well, okay, Plorat. Uh, Plorat is one way, okay, maybe, uh, now, okay, do you mean, okay, Plorat would be to cry or cry out, okay. Teresa's asking, does that mean cry or cry out? Um, yeah, calling for help is, or, yeah, uh, Plorat would be to cry out or to cry aloud. Klamat would be to clamor. That's where we get the word clamor. Uh, but plorat can also mean to wail, to, to lament, to weep aloud. Um, plorat is noisy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Crying uh, is not so much. Um, cry has several possibilities. Um, there is uh, fleo uh, or lacrimo. Uh, those are two common um, forms of, of crying. Um, uh, vagio is the sound of an infant crying. So believe it or not, uh, Latin has uh, uh, distinguishes uh, a number of ways of crying. But uh, clamat is uh, to clamor. So um, let's see what else. Oh, anyway, so there's four, and eventually we will delve into those a little bit more. Um, now, the other big one is we get one more case for nouns, the accusative. Okay. So for action verbs, i.e. that some sort of action is occurring. Okay. Crying, clamoring, hitting, whatever. Um the subject of the doer is always in the nominative, okay? The direct object or the doe, I mean, who is, to whom is the action being done, okay, is in the accusative. Now, not all verbs are able to have a direct object. Uh, I don't want to get into transitive and intransitive yet. It's, it's mentioned in the uh, Latine disco is transitive and intransitive verb. So I'm going to push those off for a moment. Because I want to talk about the accusative 
So Marcus Pulsat. So Marcus is the one doing the hitting. He is always in the nominative, okay? But Marcus Juliam Pulsat is Marcus hits Julia. So Juliam is the receiver of the, of the action. So that is put in the accusative case. Any questions on that? Good, more examples. Marcus Videt, Marcus sees. Marcus Videt Quintum, Marcus sees Quintus. So Quintum has to be in the accusative. Julia vocat, Julia calls. Emiliam Julia vocat. What does that mean? Does that Amelia mean Amelia calls Julia? No. It means Julia calls Amelia. And that is because Emiliam there is in the accusative case. So Emiliam is getting the, the verb is, is she, she's the target of the verb, okay? And Yulia is the subject. And so, pay it, again, pay attention to the endings. Um, we've sort of, I mean, we were paying to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the attention of the endings before, but that had more to do with um, getting our adjectives and everything agreeing, okay? Like uh, uh, insula mania. Big island, Insula Parva, Little Island. Okay, um, and that's that's fine, but um, when you um, start constructing sentences, it becomes even more important to make sure you you understand the the forms there. And so we get two more lines. As I as I warned you, we're going to be slowly filling out the this table. <laughs> And it's pretty easy. The good news is the, the accusative is real easy. For singular, feminine, it's AM. For masculine and neuter, it's UM across the board. Hmm. So for plural, now we really I, we haven't seen too many plurals yet. But for plural, it would be AS and then OS for the masculine, but A for the neuter. And, and one thing you're going to find out for the neuter and this is true of um, other cases or other um, uh, declensions, which we haven't had yet, is the neuter nominative is the same as the neuter accusative, and the neuter plural is always the same as the neuter accusative. So, so no jokes about hysterium being a eunuch? Because uh, it could later. be masculine. Yeah, later. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the funny thing happening in the way of the forum later. We need more Latin yet. But yes, if you, uh, how many have seen the movie uh, Funny Thing Happened in the way of the, on the way to the forum? Me, me. Yeah, I, I know you have. <laughs> yeah, there are actually a lot of uh, sneaky little Latin puns that are inserted into the play. Um, uh, some of them are not as obvious. Uh, philia, daughter. Well, okay. Hey, you know, that, that, that one hopefully was pretty obvious. Um, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that later, maybe. So anyway, so now we're, we're filling in that one. And let's see here. Uh, oh, one other thing about the verbs is Latin will often omit the pronoun when it is the subject of the sentence, okay? And really, you've been seeing that all over the place if you've been attending any of the liturgy. Uh, for example, credo in unum deum. I believe in one God. Well, there is no I in there. I, I in Latin, by the way, is ego, okay? Um, you will see ego in certain places. Uh, the, um, um, the, the Latin uh, form for uh, uh, absolution of sins is ego te absolvo. I absolve thee. 
Uh, that is one place where the ego is used, but you won't see it very often. And uh, if you remember the, the Gloria, what did we say? Uh, Laudamus te, benedicimus te. Uh, we praise thee, we bless thee. There's, there's no we in here, which would be nos, by the way. So generally, um, you, you won't see a pronoun as a, as, as a subject in, in a sentence. Um, and even less so for third person. Uh, it's rare for, for um, first and second person and does not really at all happen for third person. Now, this is only if it's the subject, okay? If it's the object or the direct object, then it will be, and, and we'll see that in the readings here in a minute. Let's see, I think this is, yeah, that's, so that's what I wanted to jump to is I wanted to go over here. Let's see, I got to find chapter two. Ah, there we go. And whoop, and I wanted to go here. There we go. So I thought we would listen to this a little bit. I will get this. Let's see here. Can I do this easily? Yeah, I think I can do this. Let me go back here and I will start. Capitulum Secundum, Familia Romana. Whoops. Julius, via uh, Romanus S. Let's go to Emilia, the right Femina Romana. chapter. I was going to say, that doesn't look right. There we go. Chapter three. Uh, and let's go to, there we go. Capitulum tertium, puer improbus, scena prima, personae, Julia, Marcus, Quintus. Yeah, I'm going to pause that right there. Yes, that, no, you, Laura, you stole my question. <laughs> what is <laughs> improbus? Bad. Yeah. Um, misbehaving. Yeah, misbehaving, naughty, um, naughty in the sense of, um, um, you know, naughty in English can take a couple of different connotations. The simplest mm -hmm. definition is not up. Yes, not proper. Ooh, that, yeah, that's a good way of translating it not up to snuff, not according to the standard, um, not, um, uh, you know, not what it should be. And from that, it can, it could be um, uh, bad, poor, inferior, um, uh, even, uh, well, you could even go to reprobate. <laughs> um, but bad, naughty, shameless. Probably the um, impudent may be the may be the closest uh, word uh, uh, I think we have in the English. I think off the top of my head. So yeah, um, puer improbus means uh, yeah the the uh, the naughty boy, what might be or the bad boy. Well, I guess bad boy in English these days has all kinds of other connotations. So. Anyway, say the naughty boy. Yeah, maybe naughty boy. If 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 you're um, yeah, old fashioned. If you're old, yeah. yeah. La la. Julia, later <laughs> est. Marcus, st. Marcus, latus non est. Julia cantat. La 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 la. Marcus, st. Marcus, iratus est. Julia cantat. La 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 la. Marcus, Juliam pulsat. Yam, Julia, non cantat, sed plorat. <laughs> Marcus ridet. <laughs> Quintus. There we go. Let's pause that for a moment. Okay. So. Later. Quid est verbum leta? Happy, 
Yes. Happy. So Julia mm. is happy. Marcus Latos non est. And having had a little sister that liked to annoy me, yeah, I kind of feel sorry for Marcus a little bit. <laughs> of course, later on, he gets himself into trouble and I don't feel sorry for him anymore. So this is where, you know, cantat, Julia cantat, Julia sings. Marcus Julian Pulsat. So this is where we see the um, accusative case. So it's Marcus who's doing the pulsating. <laughs> if we can uh, mix uh, <clears throat> mix our Latin and English together, Julia. Yes, Eratus. Marcus Eratus est. Uh, irritated, angry, mad. Um, we get the word ire, if I, if, if I remember correctly. Um, but um, let's see. And irate. Yeah, irate. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Irate. Oh, yeah, that's even better. So, uh, yam. So that, I believe, is a new word. Any takers or did, let's see. Yes, now, yeah, it means, um, it, it, it can be translated a, a couple of different ways. Uh, now, just now, um, at this time or presently, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's an adverb that means uh, in, the, in the moment, you know, of, of the current time. So we have a couple of different ways we can translate that. Hey, Michael? Yeah. Yeah, would that indicate like a change of attitude to this is what I was and this is the way it is now? Or is it just general now is the time kind of thing? It's a general now is the time. Okay, thanks. So sorry. why do you feel sorry for Marcus? I think <laughs> Marcus says it's coming. No, no, I said I I felt sorry for Marcus because his little sister was pestering him. Now I said uh, I don't feel oh, sorry for him on. at all. He could have gone outside. No, I hold on. I I said, however, later on, I don't feel sorry for him. <laughs> Obviously, you've never had a little sister pester you. Um. Yes, I had two. Anyway. Uh, so let's see here. Where was I? Okay. And yeah, these are, um, these are the Latin way of saying, uh, you, you know, there, there, let's see, what's the word? Um, there's a word for, uh, sounds things make. I can't think of what the name of the word is. It's a, it's a particular, um, uh, that's one of them. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so these are some of the typical things you will see in um, uh, in the way they express that sound. So anyway, let's uh, resume here. What are we at? Okay, so where are we? Ah, here we go. Marcum videt. Marcus non videt quintum. Quintus. Quid? Marcus puellum pulsa et videt? Let's pause Quid. that there. So, Quintus <clears throat> videt. Quintus sees Marcus. Marcus non videt quintum. Quid? What? Marcus puellam pulsat et videt. So Marcus hits the girl, little girl, and laughs. Let's continue on here. It was iratus est. At Marcum Pulsat. Yam non ridet Marcus. Marcus Iratus Pulsat Quintum. Julia. Ubi est mater. Julia Emiliam non videt. Julia Emiliam vocat. Mater Marcus Quintum Pulsat. Marcus Iratus. St. Marcus Julian Pulsat. Julia. 
Porat at Emilian Bogart. Mama, Mama, Marcus Be Posat. Emilia Bennett. Hmm. Okay. Another reason why you need to pay attention to those endings. Julia Plorat et Amelium Vocat. So it's Julia who's crying, and then she calls Amelia. So it is not Julia cries and Amelia calls. <laughs> it is oh, rather wow. Amelia who is being called. Okay. How do you know that? I'm missing that. Because of the AM ending. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So if it has a if it has an M, well, let's see how to do that. If it does not normally have an M ending, like Amelia and Marcos and Quintus, then if it does, uh, yeah, if, uh, yeah, if it normally ends in a, in a US or an A, and then that switches back to a, an AM or a UM, then that means it is in the accusative and something, it, something is being done to it, okay? The, the tricky one is if it already ends in UM, then the accusative is also in UM. And we'll, we'll deal with that later, okay? Um, okay? But for now, for the masculine and the feminine nouns, we'll go back here. See, A-M, U-M, 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 and A, well, mm -hmm. we'll just pay attention to these guys for the moment. We don't have any plurals here. Right. So, and this is, this is the way I, uh, <laughs> this is the way I described it, verbed X, meaning something happened to X. We, we don't know what it, you know, I, I, I don't know if there's a better way to express that. Uh, hit X, called X. Um, wrote X, something, anyway. There we go. By the way, is this working okay? I, I, I'm doing a double share, and hopefully it's coming out all right on the other side. That way I don't have to switch back and forth. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. So, good. So, Julia Porat et Emilium Vocat. Julia here is the subject. Julia cries and calls Amelia. And yes, mama in Latin is mama. <laughs> um, What's mama mia? <laughs> uh, and, uh, I think that's an Italian pizza, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the same. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind <laughs> that that would be yeah that's mama mea not mama mia <laughs> yeah. mama mia is italian mama mea is latin now um mama is so named because um it's where we get the word mammal and what is the uh one characteristic of mammals you need warm you need an animal it feeds its young it's warm blooded uh yes it nurses its young Correct. so mama actually reveals refers to the um usually the uh the breasts of females and in particular the um the um the the teat okay so my mammal mama it all fits together so but that's where it comes from is is the fact that um yeah mammogram thank you oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. i'm glad somebody can has brains today i just finished <laughs> like a huge report so i'm and i'm really really glad because tomorrow i'll go into work i'll Clean it up and I will be done with it. And hopefully um, I won't have to deal with it anymore, or at least uh, not very much. Because it's kind of a mind, but it's uh, just a very detailed report. You got to make sure you got everything. So, Marcus me pulsat. Marcus hit me. Okay. Amelia Venet. 
Amelia comes. Now, this is another thing we see for the first time, May. Um, we're beginning to put in some of the simple pronouns. May, for me, actually, I should probably, uh, let me go back. Where should we add this? Let's add it here. Duplicate uh, pro now. So we get May, which is me. <laughs> you can write that either way. This is the <laughs> accusative form. Or let's, see. yeah, well, uh, I'm just going to do accusative. Okay. And then we have te, which would really be the, okay, accusative, again, or maybe actually let's say the and put a te in there. Maybe that's a better way of doing it. Okay. Um, You will soon see, let's see, did they do, let me do a quick look here. Did they do a, um, no, I think they stick with, stick with May and Tay. All right, we'll stick with those for the moment. There are others. Um, let's see, no. Actually, you've had no's, believe it or not. Us. And we do not have Vos yet. Um, <coughs> again, plural. So I intentionally just, it's not that I uh, like um, y'all that much, <coughs> excuse me, but I want to emphasize the difference between you singular, which in English is, you know, the thee thou form and uh, the uh, you plural, um, which uh, in modern English, you is either plural or uh, can be either plural or singular. So um, uh, let's see. Michael, should there be mac uh, macarons over the may and pay? Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I knew there was something I was missing. Couldn't for the life of me think that. Uh, Oh, and I got the others backwards too. Wow. Well, I'm glad I, I'm glad I'm consistently inconsistent here. I'm channeling my inner Alex. There you go. Thank you. I almost wrote Alex back and said he he can't um, he can't be gone because there'll be nobody to catch all my uh, silly typos. I think it's because he's a lawyer. Words kind of mean something to lawyers usually. Anyway, so um, now we have seen, as I said, we, we did see the, um, uh, let's see, where did we put it? Yeah, you've seen the Laudamus Te, Benedicimus Te, and the Gloria. Uh, but we also had have had the Nos. Um, uh, oh, we didn't, haven't done the Our Father yet. Sorry, I was thinking we had done that. I'll, I'll probably switch to the Our Father here in the next week or so, next couple of weeks. But um, in the Our Father, et nos inducas in tentationem, uh, et nos inducas is and lead us not into temptation, although that's not a terribly good translation of that, but we'll put that one off as well. Anyway, nos is the accusative. Uh, right now, they're only going to deal with the may and the te. I think eventually they'll add in the him and her uh, I don't remember seeing it. Uh, da, 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 da. No, no, I don't see it. So that could be either me, uh, masculine or feminine. Those yes. Okay. Yes. Or uh, either. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, I had never thought of it. Um, let me. Um, uh, let's any gender. Let's use Janus. There you go. Whoop. G -E -N. 
I missed. There we go. This is true of any gender of the three. When we go to, um, and, and come to think of it, that's the same as in English. When we come to he, she, or it, then there are uh, uh, gender um, uh, uh, um, differences in the pronoun, in, in uh, which is a function of gender. Uh, mm -hmm. Am for him, and ea or sorry, am for her. And actually, I, I, I'm going to blow your mind for a moment. Um, Latin technically does not have pronouns for third persons. I was just going to ask. Um, they have something. Oh, what's it called? Uh, um, they have an. It, it's not a. They. It's used as a pronoun. Okay, hold on. I, I got to look up the. Let me get the right name for this thing. Now that I mentioned, I probably shouldn't have mentioned this. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, all right, where, uh, where's the table? Oh, there it is. There it is. I got to get the exact name of this thing here. Uh, relative. Or you, well, you're looking it up. Uh, ah, there it is. It's called an unemphatic demonstrative pronoun or adjective. How do you like that? Um, what does that mean? Well, in rea that means that grammarians probably have too much time on their hands and they have to think of these things. Uh, the thing you'll find is, is, is essentially they work the same as in English as, as a pronoun. So you can pretend they're pronouns and tell the grammarians where to stick their unemphatic demonstrative pronouns um, instead. So, but anyway, go ahead. You were going to ask a question. Uh, um, they're accusative and it, oh, okay, any genesis. And I just, I just answered my own question. I didn't look. I didn't think enough. Yep. It could be either male or female. What about singular or plural? Well, may is always singular. <laughs> Me. Okay. Okay. What, what about the? Okay. The is always singular. Second person. Okay. All right, let, let's go ahead and um, let's do this. Uh, first person singular. Whoops. Yeah. Left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. Cut it off. Um, I'd rather not. It'd make it awkward to type. <laughs> Roll. And this will be second person. Actually, I should just copy. It shouldn't them. be plural. You got them backwards. No, I'm getting there. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Now that makes sense. Thank yeah. you. And we'll we'll see the uh, we'll see the rest. Well, all right. Now I'm gonna have to, we'll we'll see the rest of these here in a minute or or, or not in a minute, but uh, later on. Okay, where are they? Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not even going to show them to you. We'll we'll, we'll wait. Till, okay. We'll wait till we get I'm already to confused. So please. Yeah, I, I've confused you enough, so I, I don't need to confuse you anymore. I've I've achieved Absolutely. my goal of confusing you. So. Right, you reached your limit. Yeah. Well, there's no point in overdoing it. Absolutely. All right, so any questions on that chapter? I'm going to delve into the next one here shortly, or I should say section. It's a good thing they have pictures. That's all I got to say. <laughs> good. All right, let's use this. Let's go over here. And when we're going to hit this part. And I'll get that started. Scena seconda. Persone. Emilia 
Julia, Marcus, Quintus. Emilia interrogat. Quis me vocat? Quintus respondet. Julia te vocat. Emilia, Quintum interrogat. Cur Julia plorat? Quintus respondet. Julia plorat, que a Marcus eam pulsat. Emilia. Quid? Puer parvam puellam pulsat? Fu. Cur Marcus Juliam pulsat? Quintus. Que a Julia cantat? Emilia. O Julia, me a parvam <laughs> filia. Marcus puer probus non est. Marcus as puer improbus. Quintus. You there we go. You were gonna say something? No, no, no. The, the um it's interesting to get the the word foo, F U. F U. Yeah. Now and now I'm, in I'm, English I'm, that I'm, means something entirely different. <laughs> yes. Um it is uh it, it is a, uh, what's the word I want? Oh, it's an interjection, okay? Uh, an exclamation is what we might say. Uh -huh. um, probably the best English translation might be fooey or fi, uh, as in, um, well, fi is, is Old English, which, um, boy, what would be a good, um, what would be a good translation of fi? Um, it, it is a, uh, it, it denotes displeasure. Okay. It'd be like shame, like shame on you. Uh, no, not quite that far. It means, uh, it, um, an expression of maybe like it, you're disgusted with them while you're doing yeah, distaste, aversion, disappointment. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of a good synonym here in English. Uh, oh no, maybe or UG. Well, UG is yeah. Um, well, you get food. You get food. Maybe it's a bad smell too. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> that, that's a different kind of fooey or yeah. food. <laughs> uh, so anyway, it would yeah. That's P, that would be PU though. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it'd be like. Um, Boy, I'm I'm kind of struggling for a good English word, but um, uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, uh, all right, where'd the line go? I've totally lost it. Oh, foo, there it is. Yeah, it's um, uh, yeah, it's it's just one of those words that. Um, uh, maybe harumph, <laughs> although that doesn't quite mm -hmm. capture the the meaning there. Anyway, but uh, we'll we'll read it some more, and you'll you'll see how to you know it's um, uh, yeah maybe shame on you might not be a bad translation of that in there now that I think about it. So anyway, let's see uh, what else do I want to see. So uh, so Amelia Quintum interrogat. So again, Emilia is asking Quintus, Cur Julia plorat? I think we, let's see, have we had Cur yet? Uh, I, yeah, I think we have, we've had Cur. Cur no, is why. Uh, let's see, wait a minute, we had Quis, Quis. I don't think we, no, we, well, haven't, we, haven't, we, haven't, we, haven't, we haven't had it yet, now that I think about it. Okay, right, Cur yeah. is, is the why. Okay. Yeah, we had the who, the what, and the how many. We have not had why. Cur is yeah. okay. Cur Julia plorat. Why is Julia crying? crying? Notice that all of these they have clever avoided using any second person nouns. They didn't ask Julia if they're going to ask Julia why are you crying. Uh, uh, it might say cur ploras with an S, which is why are you crying? Um, but they want to stick with uh, third person verbs for the moment. 
Well, that's because, uh, Michael, it's because that first part where it says Amelia Quintum in Carrigat, that she isn't, that Amelia Oh, that's true. Good point. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Amelia is asking Quintus. Yeah. Good point. Um, you know, why, why is this little girl crying? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But notice they cleverly avoided any second person uh, verbs just to make life easier for you guys. So anyway, um, so now we see, okay, puer parvum puelam pulsat. Puer pulsat parvum puelam. So not only does the noun take the accusative, but any adjectives, if you remember, we had to, the any adjective of a noun had to agree in, in um, uh, gender, number, and case. Janus, numerus, and casus. So, um, ah, now this is where we actually have, well, I'll put that off anyway. Marcus puer probus, sorry, yeah, probus don est, Marcus est puer improbus. That's a short O, it's hard to make that short. I so want to make it long. I've probably been consulting with known Pius the 10th, was it 10th? Yeah, pronunciation. So any questions on that section? Okay, then let us move on. The puella proba est. Well, uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think uh, I would. Uh, I, I, I think really uh, Marcus here is the uh, instigator. Let's see. I think. Well, come on, start back up. The there. proba est. Emilia, quintum interrogat. Whoops. Ubi est Julius. Cur non venet? Emilia, Julium go. non videt. Respondet Marcus. Pater dormit. Oh, here we are. Quintus. Mater non te sed me interrogat. Emilia. St. Puri. Ubi es pater? Quintus. Pater non hic est, sed Marcus hic est. Quintus, Julium vocat. Pater. Pater. Julius, quintum, non audit, neque venet. Cur Julius, quintum, non audit? Julius, eum non audit, quia dormit. Marcus. Ha, he, pater dormit, neque te audit. Emilia. Fu, puer. Emilia, irata est. Mater, verberat, tux tax, tux tax. <laughs> Marcus plorat. <laughs> Julius, eum audit. Yam non dormit pater. All right. Let's see. Um. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So now we do see the eum. Uh, Julius eum non, non audit. Now, he says quia. I have always pronounced that quia. Um, that's probably because of singing it so often in church. But it, it really is a short eye, quia. But you'll probably hear me say quia more often than not. Um, but eum. Julius eum non audit. Julius does not hear him. So we can go back to our, let's see, we did the, oh, okay. Let us add in him slash her. And we have eum and eum. Okay, and let's copy this over. This is masculine or feminine. Uh, 
third person singular. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, verberat. Verberat. Any suggestions on what that means? We already saw, saw verbalized. No, <laughs> yeah, spank is a good is a good um, a good uh, translation, but pulsat means to hit once. But if you go over here to verbarat, it says pulsat et pulsat, which means to strike again and again. So uh, yeah, I think we. Uh, I don't know if we get ver reverberate from that. Good question. I don't think we do, because um, I think I think that comes from vibro to to uh, vibrate. But um, verbarat means to strike um, over and over again. Yeah, it can mean um, eh, maybe. Uh, I'll, we'll have to look it up. But anyway, it really actually means to beat, <laughs> to drub, to flog. Uh, you can also use it to lash or to scourge. I'm sure uh, Amelia was probably not scourging her eldest son, uh, but she probably was giving him a, a, a good beating, as we would say. So, uh, but spanking is is a good English translation, okay, even though it I'm not sure that's uh, exactly accurate. And of course, tuxtox is uh, yeah, tanning his hide. Yeah, that that would be a good um, that would be a good uh, good translation. But tuxtox is um, another one of those uh, onomatopoeias, and I will copy it from here and drop it into the messages. There we go. That is uh, so. We'll um, tell you what. We'll get uh, do a new slide. There we. Whoops. That's kind of small, isn't it? There we go. And vocabularia. Uh, uh, so what do we have? We have. Well, we'll use this one for the moment. Let's see, were there any others? Um, oh, okay. Let's not forget our other friends. Crying. Let's see, foo. Um, Oh, this exclamation of irritation. Uh, let me fix this. Whoops, displeasure. Oh, that works. Or irritation. There we go. But um, yeah, taking them out to the Latin woodshed. Yeah, well. Uh, I think, let's see, do I have all of them? I think I have all of them for the yeah, that's in this section. Let's see, was there anything else I wanted to... Anyway, yeah, so... Um, Potter dormant. Isn't that always the truth? The kids get into a trouble whenever you're napping. So... All right, it is eight, let's see, I think, how much more do we have to go? Let's see, what's the next section? Because I'm inclined to, oh, did I stop it early? Uh, oh, no, I didn't, yeah. So I'd have to go to the next section. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, you know, uh, Michael, before you go. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Any further, I, I got, I got a, I keep looking at that uh, Emilia uh, Fu Piri 
Emilia Iriat, Irata, Irata Est, not their affiliate verbatim. Then it's, uh, you know, the, it, the yeah, text, the text, text. Is yeah, the female, is the, uh, the, okay, I'll wait till you get there. Yeah. <laughs> Back up. Okay. It's, it's not a question of, of the um, actual uh, verbiage or the way it's written. It's a question is, I, I'm wondering if she's, I always thought in Roman families, the father was a disciplinarian. And, and I'm wondering when it says the mother is irritated with him and it says mater filum, uh, and then uh, I'm wondering if she's lashing at him verbally saying, you, you oh, know, she's you know, okay. until I tell your father. Well, you know, all right. Um, or if I'm being nitpicky, I don't know. No, it's not that different. It's not that different back then as it was today. I mean, well, today it, all bets are off. <laughs> well, that's that's true. Uh, uh, say but let, you know, but let, let's let's go back to like the you know the fifties and sixties and maybe Correct. the seventies. Yes. For those of us who can remember back that far, um, you and I are too young to remember that. But if we if we did remember it, we would realize that, um, yeah, the father is certainly, and that's why the father eventually gets called. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think I still have the wrong, yeah, yeah, still got the wrong one. Hold on here. Let me grab. It's line 45 that it helps. Well, I don't know. Let me grab that one. It's uh, the second, uh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, there we go. Um, no, the mother, okay, the mother really, but look at, but look at Marcus, Marcus's response, ha, 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 you know, like he, get, like he doesn't give a, a, you know what. Yeah, and, um, so that, that, to me, it implies that he's not being afraid, that, you know, go ahead, you know, I don't care what you say, you know, until she goes, oh, you just wait till your father wakes up, you know, one of those numbers, yes. and it's like running. Yeah, yeah, and, and keep, and keep in mind that, you know, this is a contrived story, but no, the okay. uh, certainly uh, the father uh, in in ancient Rome held the uh, you know the was the head of the entire household, the pater familias. But the mother um, was in charge of the children. Okay, okay. and that continued until the uh, the. Um, uh, uh, at least the the men or, or the boys became what would be recognized as um, oh let's see what was the word um, uh, when it started reaching manhood yeah you know yeah they, they really the weren't, they they weren't yet nearly they were um, there, there's a term for it and I've forgotten it now. But they would be essentially, um, uh, they would be no, considered no longer children. Let's put it that way. Correct. Um, uh, yeah, well, I, okay, yeah, I guess it would be like a bar mitzvah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, they, they would be considered, um, uh, the, oh, the closest thing on the, um, uh, on, on, that I can think of um, is the uh, um, oh, what does the Spanish call it? The quincion, quincier, quince. Anyway, Quinceanera. yeah, thank you. Um, when the girl turns, uh, what is it, fifteen? Yeah, sixteen. Yeah, they have a coming out party, mm -hmm. and uh, they had something similar like that for for young men, well, teenagers uh, in Rome, and so uh, no, this is uh, you know. Uh, we don't know, I don't know, we may find later on how old uh, Marcos is, wouldn't surprise me, but he's certainly not yet a... Um, Considered a young man. A young man, you know, and in fact, they, they use, you know, they, they're using the word puer, okay? Uh, yeah, that's true. Fact, they that's said true. puer improbus, well, puer is boy, okay? Correct. And I think is it is it Adelshen's? I do you do, let me uh, look this up for a moment and see if I can remember. Uh, uh, I don't 
don't see it. Oh, here it is. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, ah, there it is. Oh, yeah, I, uh, okay, I will paste it in here. That is generally, um, oh, let's see here. No, lessons. Oh, and there's also Uvanus, which is even also older. Uh, hmm. let, me, let me get, um, let me, um, uh, let me get that. There we go. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, Uvanus is a little older. They actually had a um, gradation. We, we do sort of, um, you know, baby, infants, uh, or infant, and then um, puer, puella, boy, girl, and then... Uh, all the way up. I'll see if I can look up the uh, the exact um, sequence. So, um, but yeah, he's uh, yeah, and this is fairly typical. Is uh, the father is then called into the uh, to the dispute here, and let's see, we are in. Oh yeah, look what happens. He looked at the father's the one whipping the boy. There you go. Um, I think the mother get the verbal threat to him. Oh Just well, I'm sure, no. The, the mother, the mother smacked him. Okay, the, he the just, they both had a turn. The young man. Yeah, yeah the mother. Okay, I guess when the, uh, I was going to say when the mother smacked him, I guess it didn't have an impact on him. Well, and he cried. He In cried. other words, she didn't strike him like the father would strike him. You see the picture of, this, of him striking him with a with a rod or something. Yes. Uh, Bacolum. Uh, my mom started spanking him. That's when Marcus got really loud, and that's when Daddy woke up. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, I don't see her hitting her with a hitting him with a wooden spoon, so it must not be that important. Yeah, I don't see uh, Julius Provus. Uh, well, they use spank there in the same plot. Like, uh, uh, I was uh, saying what the father's doing. Hold on. No, I was looking for. Uh, they don't. See, this is called a baculum. It's a rod, basically. <laughs> Okay. So we'll um, but we'll 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 hold off we'll hold off on that. We're, let's just do the. Uh, um, um, let's see. We did what the first two, right? Correct. Okay. So we'll we'll hold off on. Uh, well, no. Let's let's move on to chapter three here. Well, don't we got time. We got time. We got time. Let me let me close up some of these windows here. All right. Uh. There we go. There we go. All right, let's let's start this up. Scena tertia. Personae: Julius, Emilia, Julia, Marcus, Quintus. Quintus. Pater venit. Emilia, Quintum non audit. Hold on. Quea, Marcus <laughs> forat. I hit the wrong one. Notice he yep. said Venet, Shorty. Julius Quintum Vident, Eumque Interrogat. Cur Marcus Plorat. Quintus Respondet. Marcus Plorat, Quea Mater Eum Verberat. Julius. Said Cur Mater Marcum Verberat. Quintus. Marcum Verberat. Quea puer imperbus est. Marcus parvam puellam pulsat. Julia. Mama, pater hic est. Emilia, Julium videt. Emilia. Tuus Marcus filius imperbus est. Julius. Fu puer, puer provus non pulsat puella. Now, did you see this? What? Any takers? Your son. Yes. <laughs> A mother says, your son, Marcus. <laughs> Not our son. 
<laughs> your son. <laughs> I'm sure they did that with a certain amount of amusement and intentional. So that, that's the oh, other thing. It's always been like that. What? I said it's always been like that. When, when a kid screws up, uh, and it, depending on the parent, it's like the other one says, well, this is your son or your daughter. You yeah, know, that's right. I mean? Yes, it's never my son or my daughter. It's your son or, or your ours. It's uh, yes. yours. Yes, definitely. So anyway, this, I believe, is the first time we see the um, possessive form, if I'm not mistaken. And huh. so, is that right? Did we see, did we see a Mayo Ceratuus? Uh, I'm, I'm having... Um, uh, I think we've had Mayos. I think we had Mayos. Yeah. I think. So anyway, we'll continue on here. Cuer qui parvum puellum pulsat improbus est. Julius iratus puerum improbum berberat. Tux tux, tux tux, tux tux. Marcus plorat. Quintus latus est et ridet. Julia later non est, neque ridet. Cur non later est Julia, non later est, quea Marcus plorat, Julia est puella proba. Okay, so. Uh, okay, Julia later non est, nequa ridet. Any takers? Uh, she is not happy, nor does she laugh. That's right. Yeah. Cur non leta est Julia? Julia est puella proba. Sorry, proba. Short O. So, um, yeah, and, and pro, proba here might be good, or um, I'd even use upright. Maybe uh, let's see what would I use. What would be a good synonym here? Um, uh, um, let's see here. Proper or on, virtuous, honorable, well behaved. Yeah, maybe well behaved is a better. better good word. nature. Uh, no, that that's probably a different. That's probably a different um, sense of the word, but well-behaved, I think, is, is perhaps a, a good way of, of, of translating that. Anyway, so uh, for next time, I'll send these out um, hopefully this weekend. This weekend, I'm going to be rather busy. Um, it is our, our Easter on those of us who follow the um, Gregorian calendar which is most of the world, uh, was last week, of course. But those who still follow the Julian calendar, Easter is this Sunday. And we have a number of um, Orthodox who are good friends. So we're, we're, uh, um, we get to celebrate Easter twice. So we'll have a bunch of them over. And uh, so it'll be a rather busy weekend. Um, Lamb has got- Every year. Every year. Uh, lamb, lamb has gotten very expensive too. Wow. Anyway. Oh God, you're not kidding. Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah. We. Uh, yeah, we have enough friends. We always have to buy two. So. You know what? I bought. I bought. This is the first time I bought domestic lamb, and I'll never buy it again. The so. imported from Australia. I mean, yeah, from Australia or um, uh, what's the country next to them? Uh, I can't think of them right now. New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand. Thank you. Uh, their lamb is, I think, far superior than ours. I hate to say that. Because I like to buy American, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I bought a rack of lamb and boy, I was not happy. I mean, hmm. that was like a hundred bucks. I am mildly surprised at that. That may have been just the one you got because we've generally. That could it be. It didn't have a good, you know, that fat cap on it. Ooh. Oh, well, then they may have also trimmed it badly. That's another possibility. Yeah, I think so, because that's the best part is chewing on that fat sometimes. <laughs> we got invited to uh, some friends that were Greek 
years ago, and they had a whole lamb on a spit that they were, I mean, yep. that they went good. away with the full lamb treatment and everything. Oh, wow. It's like doing the pig. Ooh. Yeah, well, we don't we don't have a spit handy, so uh, we we uh, buy the uh, the uh, the leg and then uh, pop it on the grill. And there's uh, probably more gar there's enough garlic in that lamb, the way I prepare oh, yeah. it, that it will ward off vampires for at least six months. So garlic garlic and olive oil, uh, and oregano. Oh and, yes, and oregano and yeah. rosemary and pepper. Oh yes, and rosemary. So anyway, and you put it on a rotisserie. I hope you had a rotisserie, Mike. No, sadly, I don't. I wish I did. It would make life easier. But uh, uh, it's just like but night do, and day. But I do turn it frequently. <laughs> good man, good man. So maybe I'll, uh, I, I might throw a, uh, I'll try and uh, uh, make, get a picture of it for uh, next time. It, it won't be in the notes. I'll just pop it up. <laughs> anyway. Uh, People look at anyway. So uh, yeah, next time, okay, okay. chapter three, the Familia Romana, part two. Now we, you know, we we even got into part three, but I want everybody to at least be through sec section two exercises three through five. Uh, there are some of you who have already done that, for which I say thank you. Uh, and if you want to read ahead, go right ahead. I, I don't want to stop you. Um, but I, I do want uh, folks to, uh, to, to, to get up to that because what's going to happen now, and, and you, you might have seen it a little bit in this exercise or, or in these readings, is um, they're going to be dumping more and more um, uh, words and grammar and vocabulary, okay, uh, to build up a lot more things you know chapter one was basically introducing uh that nouns have gender and number pretty much you know insula one island insule two islands or i should say una insula duo insule for example um and agreement of nouns and adjectives etc the second one, they began introducing, well, we introduced uh, what the, um, the uh, genitive and, and the, uh, a few other things. And then with chapter three, we've added verbs and the accusative. And so now the sentences are, come, be, are gonna become, you know, quite a bit more complicated. And if we skip ahead, not to terrorize everybody, but if we skip ahead to chapter four, there it is. And we look at this. Come on, there we go. Uh, now we're going to get even more. Uh, we've had numbers, but we are adding, um, more vocabulary. I don't think, uh, oh, we may not be, um, uh, let's see. I'd have to go to the end. Let me go to the end here for just a second. Oh, let's see what they have. Well, let's see what they have. Oh, no, I know. Let's go look at the grammatica. There we go. So, <laughs> oh, that's no help. All right, I'll look at the Latina disco. Let's see what they got in there. There we go. So we're going to ta start talking about the vocative, the imperative, conjugations, which I hinted at, okay, a little bit, uh, the pronouns, which are not really pronouns, but we'll pretend they are, and tell the grammarians to leave them alone. And so um, possessive pronouns. So we're going to be building up rather rapidly here over the next uh a couple of uh, chapters so if you get behind now uh it'll be much much harder to catch up so consider that a um you know a warning so please get through exercises three through five at least uh the first two sections in chapter three and then we will uh meet back next week oh before we go did anybody take time to see the video that I sent out the URL for in the email?
I know one of you did. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, I'm not going to let you guys escape without seeing the. Um... Oh, yeah. I saw it, Mike. Well, yeah. Oh, I, God, I had a brain freeze. Is that the one that kind of cartoonish? Yeah. Salvete. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eternum. Eternus filius Dei erat Jesus. Non erat homo in principio, solum Deus erat. Et Deus creavit celum et terram. Et creavit hominem, masculum et feminam creavit eos. Viditque okay. Deus. Yeah, we'll just stop it there. But go see it. Um, I think you should be able to understand it. And uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I think this does a better job than this. I think it was really good. <laughs> well, oh, this pronunciation is very good. Yeah, yes, it is. yeah. She's uh, she usually does classical, but she actually did that. Uh, well, in fact, there is a version of that classical. Um, so, uh, but anyway, yes, she speaks very well. So, but watch it. Um, you know, the more you practice, the better you'll get. So with that, uh, let us. Uh, Before you sign out, no, uh, no more. Uh, I mean, you got a chart. A charts we're supposed to be looking at. I will. Uh, I did not get a chance to do a whole lot of charts today or this week. OK. A paradigm. Uh, wherever you're going. Yeah, um, I probably won't get a whole lot done next week or for next okay. week. Because I typically do them on the weekend, okay? And, you know, last weekend, of course, was the Easter Trudy woman, Easter itself. So that was, I, you know. Forget it. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> uh, I have liturgies to go to <laughs> and various other things. Oh, Teresa says there's charts all over the net. Um, well... Yeah, but I, this is not for, uh, when I say charts, I mean things specific to the Familia Romana and uh, various other stuff. Yeah, we'll we'll get, um, I, I assume, Teresa, you're referring to the conjugation tables? And the declensions and everything, yeah. Yeah, well, no, we, we'll, we'll stay away from that. Is that confusing at this point? Yeah, well, we had, no, we, well, there, there's the, uh, there's the declension. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's yeah. good. The charts. That's it. By the way, that was in uh, the charts before. I stole this from uh, the uh, class yeah, before. Two. The class before uh, the last. Oh, oh, oh. Class okay. Ago. And uh, added uh, these guys to to emphasize. So the only thing we really have is the vocative, which is actually you get the vocative here shortly, which is really easy. Okay, if, if you know, it's the easiest one. Um, because the only thing that changes in the vocative really is um, uh, the uh, U.S. ending verb, uh, sorry, U.S. ending nouns end in an E. So dom dominus, Lord, domine, O Lord, okay? Because otherwise they're, they're all the same. And uh, I actually I probably had to put... Um, uh, oh, that's right. There are no endings there. So, and for the plural, they're identical to the to the nominative. Those two lines are the same. So, um, yeah, I was trying to say, there ahead. was one chart I found that like had all of the conjugations on yeah, it. Well, I was just feel overwhelmed, and when I looked at it, I could see patterns that made me think it was going to be not as you know difficult it's, as I was thinking. It's it not. Was. It's not. We'll we'll work our we'll work ourselves up to it. Um, we have a way, ways to go before we hit the third declension, um, which is good because the third declension is the hard one. That one has, um, um, well, it, it, it's, um, 
the reason the third declension is hard is because the roots change. Um, and we'll 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 see how that works later. But anyway, but um, yeah, let's uh, let's work on uh, chapter three, parts one and two. If you haven't done both, and anything else in the in the in the uh, in the um, in the in the uh, older exercises. All right. So with that, let's mute. Oh, any other last questions? Because I, I want to mute and we'll say the final prayer and okay here we go all right in nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti amen ave maria gratia plena dominus tecum benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui jesus sancta maria mater dei ora pro nobis peccatoribus Nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. And so with that, the class is done.